Welcome to Lecture 8 of Biology 116 entitled Plant Diversity 2. In this next lecture, we're going to be continuing our discussion on plants. Um, after we've established the fact that plants were able to colonize land and had many specific adaptations devoted to that colonization of land, we started looking at the two different major types of plants, those plants that are seedless and those plants that are seeded. And we also looked at the fact that plants can be divided into non-vascular and vascular plants. Now we're going to continue looking at the vascular plant side of the story, but now focus on the seed vascular plants. And in order to understand that, we have to first understand um, a couple of key characteristics focused on land adaptations. So we're going to entitle this first flowchart, the land adaptations of seed plants. And this will be part one of these land adaptations that seed plants possess. So, we know that there's been a big colonization of land, a shift from water, the aquatic environment, to the terrestrial land. And so, when you're shifting from a huge you know, difference in terms of aquatic environment to terrestrial environment, you're going to have big differences in the way that you work, both structurally and functionally, and we'll see that with the seed plants. First and foremost, what we're first going to establish is the fact that seed plants possess uh, are going to have a reduced gametophyte stage. It's going to be a reduced gametophytes. So we know that there is this story between sporophytes and gametophytes. In the vascular side of things, in the vascular seed plant side of things, the gametophytes are going to be highly, highly reduced. And that means that the gametophytes are going to usually be things like a microspore. And a microspore will be something that possesses a gametophyte structure. But specifically, we can say about the microspore, about the gametophytes of these plants, is that they are developed from within the sporangia structure. And we know that whenever you see a sporangia structure in plants, you automatically start thinking about the sporophyte. And this is the sporangia structure of the parental sporophyte. So the sporophyte contains a sporangia structure. Within the sporangia structure, you will have this gametophyte um, sort of development. And remember, in the sporophyte stage, we are diploid, 2N. So we're going to have a dominant 2N life cycle that's going to have a very reduced gametophyte life cycle, as we'll see later on. In addition, in terms of this word, reduced, what we really mean by this is the fact that these plants that possess both the sporophyte generation and gametophyte generation simultaneously, the part of that's gametophytic in its descriptive nature, let's say, is going to be highly, highly reduced, meaning that it's going to be completely dependent. Completely dependent. And this is a new shift that we see. Completely dependent on the sporophyte generation. So we're still talking about one plant that has two different generations, two different parts. And the sporophyte part, the sporophyte generation, the dominant part of it is going to be the home of the gametophyte, I would like to think of it. This is because the sporophyte generation is the dominant period of this vascular seed plant on land. Okay, so the sporophyte, we can equate this to the dominant DOM for dominant period. And this is a commonality amongst all vascular plants. The sporophyte generation is the dominant period of all vascular plants, both seedless and seeded. But in the seeded situation, this is definitely, definitely true. In addition, this is going to be a big part. The sporophyte section of this plant is going to provide protection. So we'll say that it provides protection. And this protection is specifically going to be from uh, typical things that you would imagine, like stress or harsh con environmental conditions, I would say. Stress slash harsh, ENV for environmental conditions. And that's because this is the dominant period. This is the, the large part of this seed plant that we'll look at a little bit later. And also, not only does it provide protection, it also provides nutrients. It supplies nutrients NUTR for nutrients, and UTRs for nutrients to the gametophyte. So what do we say from all these facts, these little tiny bits of knowledge here? This reduced gametophyte is really, really in a great need of the protection and the nutrients and everything that the sporophyte provides for it. 
Take a look at figure 30.2. In this figure, you get a really good uh, representation and visualization of the sporophyte and gametophyte relationship, uh, specifically within these seed plants. Okay, so this is our first land adaptation, the fact that there are reduced gametes, uh, specifically gametophytes of these plants. So we'll get to the purpose of this a little bit later when we talk about the life cycles of these seed plants. We're going to continue looking at a different adaptation now, and this adaptation is called heterospory. So heterospory, we actually cover this in our previous lecture, simply means that you produce both spores, and we'll say specifically produces both what? So there's homosporous and heterosporous. Here we're looking at different, so hetero, two different types of spores will be produced. When I say produces both, I mean it produces both a megaspore, and we already should be thinking where the megaspore originates and comes from, and also a microspore. Where does that originate? Where does that come from? We know that the megaspore, mega, will always be associated with the female gametophyte. So not only do we have a gametophyte part of this plant, but we have a specific part of the gametophyte that's female, and we also have a specific part of the gametophyte that is male. And that's where the microspore comes from. That's where we have our male gametophyte. And something we can sort of say about both of these is the fact that both the male gametophyte and the female gametophyte, both the microspore and the megaspore, the heterosporous nature is all protected by the sporophyte. So both are protected by that dominant sporophyte stage. So the sporophyte is that very, very important part of the seed plant's life cycle. And finally, last thing in terms of Latin adaptations for this flowchart, we're going to conclude on the fact that there's going to be specific and very important ovule and egg production. So this is going to be a big, big part of these land plants because the seed that we see here is going to be focused and originating from this ovule and egg production part of this flowchart. So, first and foremost, let me explain what an ovule is. So an ovule contains three major parts that you have to remember. So an ovule, I'll say, equals a megasporangium. So you should already be thinking, is this male part or female part? And of course, megasporangium would mean this is related to the female gametophyte. So it has the megasporangium. It also would then thus also obtain or contain the megaspore that comes from the megasporangium. And it will also contain one last part, which would be the integument. And I'll explain what this is right now. So we have three parts, don't forget. Ovule contains megasporangium, megaspore, and integument. So what is an integument or what are integuments? Let's do that over here. Integuments. Integuments are going to be just layers of sporophyte tissue, layers of protective tissue. So let's write this down. Layers of sporo tissue. Now, the purpose of these integuments, this covering, is going to be to sort of protect a very important part of the plant, where the megaspore is going to come from, where the megasporangium is located. And these layers of sporophyte tissue are going to ultimately form something very important to the seed nature of these plants, and that is the seed coat. The seed cannot survive without a seed coat, and the reason why there is a seed coat is because of the integuments that are there in the first place. And the integuments are sporophyte tissue that help cover and protect this developing seed because there's a seed coat to wrap around and make sure the seed stays safe. Uh, we can also state furthermore that this seed coat, just like I said, uh, its purpose is essentially the fact that it surrounds plus protects the megasporangium. And that's something worthy of protection. This is where the megaspore is going to come from. This is a big part of the plant reproductive life cycle. So you're going to protect that very important structure. And because this is where the megasporangium is located and protected, eventually you're going to get a megaspore out of this megasporangium so long as it's protected. Once that megaspore comes out, that the megaspore develops, that is our female gametophyte. So our, our basic way of understanding how this plant is going to reproduce or develop is the fact that you have this ovule region, within it you have a megasporangium that gives off and develops a megaspore, all of which is surrounded by a protective layer of seed coat known as integument that's going to eventually develop into the female gametophyte. And when we get to this female gametophyte stage, this is what's going to eventually produce one or more eggs. 
and that's what's going to be fertilized. So we'll say produces one or more, and we'll squeeze this in over here, eggs. And that is what's going to be fertilized. So the end result of all of this is these eggs are these eggs, and that's important because that's what's going to be the big part of sperm and egg fertilization, as we'll see a little bit later. Final two points about the ovule and egg production within land plants, seed land plants, let's say, is the fact that in gymnosperms, there are two classes of plants we're going to be looking at today, gymnosperms and angiosperms, both of which are seeded land plants. Gymnosperms are going to have a megasporangium, so they have this female part that eventually gives off the eggs that's going to be covered uh, surrounded by one integument, so this is a, uh, a big thing to remember actually, surrounded uh, by one integument, whereas the angiosperms on the other side of this story of vascular seeded land plants, angiosperms are going to have a megasporangium that's surrounded by two or more, so megasporangium surrounded by, uh, we'll just say two, I think that's the correct true number for most cases, megasporangium surrounded by two integuments. So double the protection here. And we'll see why we need double the protection in this versus this as we move forward with the anatomy and life cycles of both. And that covers our first look at the land adaptations of seed plants.